geographically, we are in Australia, and uh, Australia, and uh, in Byron Bay, or near Byron Bay. It's actually nowhere near Byron Bay, but it's all this part of the world is called Byron Shire. And uh, me and Dave have come down here every year for a few months, and we like to uh, to integrate ourselves into the community that we have many friends here. So it's like a homecoming for us. It, it, although we only stay a few months, it's the longest we stay anywhere during the during our time. So those three or four months are really precious, and it's a time to be creative. It's something. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about too. It's it's Osho, you know, and creativity, you know, and the way that uh, there's no off switch. It's just once you once you in that flow. What we've found is it's just we don't. There's no kind of going away from it. It's um, it's just what we wake up with and what we go to bed with and. Uh, so we're doing an album, <laughs> another album. <coughs> I don't think, actually I said to Joby who's producing it and uh, I probably said to you too, but I, I, that, you know, the, the concept of making an album is not so uh, important anymore. It's more like uh, just to let's play together and make some, good music out of the songs that we've got and uh, and then we see what we've got you know when you go home so in that way it takes off the pressure it takes off any idea that we're performing and we've got to do something for a record company because it's got to be out because it's a product it's not that it, but it is a, an opportunity for me and Deva to invite the musicians to come to Australia come out of the winter for a couple of weeks up there with, in Denmark or wherever, and, uh, or Canada or England, and, uh, and be in this very benevolent energy, you know. It's, Australia is incredibly benevolent, and, uh, and uh, this part of the world is the, uh, you know, in Australia it has the highest rainfall here, so you, it's m very lush and green. Um, and that's a good environment to to work in or to play in, and um, and especially as we we've we've just been on a world tour, which was incredibly intense because of uh, many different reasons. One was that I had that heart operation, and the other is that we were because of that there was um, a certain aspect in the music that was somehow removed and that was me and uh, the adventure of putting playing music and, and, and putting it together in a way that um, uh, you know we could actually share with other people because we there basically as a support for voices for people's voices that's what we like to do and uh, you know, you like Pete Seeger could do that for thousands of people with a banjo, you know. So you don't need, I mean, it was Pete Seeger, but you don't need, uh, as in the folk days, you don't need a, a big uh, musical statement to create a foundation for people to sing. But that's what I like. I like the challenge and I, I, I've got these great musicians and who are used to playing for people who listen to them or who dance to them. Um, but to create a space for people to sing with them, that was new, that's new for all, all of us, you know, not so much me and David, but for the other guys. So, so it's been a great journey. And now we've come to a point where we, during that year, we refined the music. We found a way to play good music and at the same time uh, in, in create a, a landscape for people to join us in which they could join us in their, for their voices. So it becomes a very musical, uplifting experience. 
and we've been doing that for years, but with the songs, uh, that only happened in Osho's Ashram, where we wrote, we didn't really write anything, but we made little songs up, like falling leaves blowing away, words disappear, and all I can say is I love you. You know, we would sing that over and over and over and over again in Buddha Hall, you know. It would become like a mantra, but it, they were English words. And uh, so with this album, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a way that I've, you know, I'm in the last years of my existence here, you know. That's what, that's what we're, we all are in a way. We're all getting closer and closer to, the, to death every moment, all of us, every breath. Um, and I'm much closer than, than most of you because <laughs> I've been around longer. So uh, it becomes even more obvious that uh, is no real point in uh, entertaining anyone or trying to uh, uh, get anyone's attention or anything with, with the music. It's not about that for me. It's just about, um, over the years, I've seen how um, our music and and who Deva and I are and, and, the, and what we share has really uh, become important to many people. That wasn't a plan, but I see that it is. And you know, I know now that, that people, and I don't, people is a bit of a strange even to, 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 to enclose it in that word because they're really like friends. You know, every email, every whatever, you know, Instagram, they're our friends and uh, we are in a community together. So it's not like I'm the musician and there's the audience. We are all community. And that's one of the gifts that Osho gave me. It was like the sense of community where everyone contributes, whatever they have, you know. And... Um, so that's what I did. I just contributed what I had, which was uh, the ability to uh, to express a certain emotion in a song, um, and the emotion that I was expressing was beyond the normal uh, relationship idea of an emotional song. It was for. Uh, a community who uh, had all individually recognized that they didn't know. They'd come to uh, come to a guru with with somehow every, you know whatever way you come to the guru, when you become a, a disciple, when that moment happens, when in Osho's case, it was. Uh, it was a it was a line drawn in the sand, you know. It was like uh, wear red clothes, you know. Walk around in your city wearing red clothes, you know. And then you could ask yourself, <laughs> Do I really want this? Is that what? I, is that you know? So, so that was a commitment. And then um, wear the mala. Do I really want a, a picture of Osho around my neck all the time? Uh, you have to be that desperate. You have to be somehow ready to go, I want whatever you say because I do not know what I'm doing here. I want to know the meaning of life. I want to know why I'm here, what it all is. And uh, I feel like you have the answer. So tell me what I should do. And, and he would say, okay, here you go. Wear red clothes. Put this smile around your neck. I'm going to give you a new name. So you have a new identity. You're not that person before. You are not. You have a chance to. You have a second chance, if you want. That's all I can do. I can't. I can't. You know, it's not like a religion where, for instance, say the Sikh religion, where you wear the turban and you have certain definite physicality uh, agreements. It's not that. It wasn't like that, in in. Uh, in, in Osho's world, apart from wearing red. That was the commitment. And uh, 
And it made you, it just made you uh, decide whether you wanted it or not. How, how much do you, do you want this thing? How much do you trust this guy with a long beard, you know? And uh, so what happened is that everybody in my community had felt that in some way. We'd all felt that and we'd all said, yeah, I want, I, I. so we were all in this space of trust. And we were all in this, it was a journey. It wasn't a stagnant pool where we're all just sort of hanging out, uh, uh, saying, oh, well, what's trust and what's not? And uh, it, 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 was a, it was an ongoing journey because there was no limits apart from obvious things, but there were, there was, it was a safe environment to, for all of everybody to explore who they really are and to let, to let uh, uh, emotions and deal with certain conditionings that you'd been given uh, that were holding you back in some way. That, that was the almost like, is that the crux? Is that why I can't be who I am? Because I'm conditioned by other people. So who, who am I if I wasn't conditioned? And uh, so these were the kind of, this made a flow. We were all, so we would be meeting each other with those kind of unsaid understandings about who we were and what we were all doing here. And when he died, it fragmented. It all fragmented. It was like, like a volcano and all these, every, ev everywhere there were bits of light and little clusters of light all over the planet. But it wasn't communal. But me, I never left. I never left the community. But all I did was, because I was playing music, there would always be a bunch of people there. And that was, whether they were sannyasins or not, we were community. We were all connecting in the same thing. We'd all come to the point where we wanted to be on, on the path, you know on the journey, in the flow, if it's a river, you know. And uh, so that's, that's what happened. And this music has become uh, the music of a community. It's a music for a community. It's, uh, and, uh, you know, and if, you, if you're not in that community, and it's, it's worldwide, but it's very exclusive because not many people know about such a thing. They think chanting mantras is some sort of new age fashion. And uh, so, you know, there are people that, would, that, that, that uh, don't understand what it is. And, uh, you know, as soon as you want to understand it, you're part of the community. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens. There's more and more people who have been touched by David's voice, who feel like, oh, I want to. What is this? What is what? What community creates that music, that voice? You know, I want to know. And uh, and then when they find out, no, it's Rajneesh, you know. <laughs> and that makes me so happy, you know, because he was the most misunderstand, misunderstood. Uh, guy, you know. So, um, what we're doing with this music is to make something that this 70-something-year-old guy can uh, recite his poetry to and sing his songs to, uh, which uh, is it's a very thin line because it it doesn't it's it's not to be oversimplified the music but it's also not to be over intellectualized and that guy is you the 70 year old guy yeah that's yeah, okay. me yeah. so so uh, what they're doing in there when you two is we're all uh, in a community now we understand where where this music uh, is appropriate and who, who are the people uh, who uh, resonate with it and who use it for uh, moments of great aus auspiciousness, you know, like the birth of, a, a, of their child, the music would be playing, you know, it would be the first thing the child hears would be Deva. 
and the Gayatri, you know, and and uh, and you know, that that that's big. That's big when you take it on a personal level, you know. But it's it's only big. It's not big at all because it's. Or we're all equal in our community. We are, or you're having your baby and we're singing. It's as auspicious, both things are auspicious. So, or you're taking your last breath and this is the music that he or she wanted to hear. And again, there we are, there we are with the music and, uh, uh, and, and opening the space for, for that great transition, you know. And then in the middle of those two, polarities, birth and death, there's making love. And, uh, you know, and there's again. So we, you know, it's, it, you see, it's, it's, not, it's only for the people in the community. We, we, we know it's our food. So it's Deva. Uh, it's our food, you know, it's our soul food. That's why they call it soul food. And it, it's, it's a nourishment. And so this, this, uh, this music that we're making is, uh, I think I will call the album Devotee. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, in a, but right now that came to me as a good, as a good expression of where I'd come to in my life and, uh, and where I felt I've lived ever, you see, ever since I met Osho. Somebody said to me recently, you know, like, so how long have you been with Osho? And, uh, and, or, or how long were you with Osho? That's the one. How long were you with Osho? You know, as if it stopped, and it never, you know, it never stops. It's, it once you, once you let go into uh, 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 trusting a guru, you are potentially losing everything that you thought you had, <laughs> and. Uh, that happened to me. I just jumped in and I couldn't get out even if I wanted to. I didn't want to. I never even had a doubt, even when all the scandal and all the, all the stuff. It never, it never, there was nowhere for me to go. This was my life and this was the master and he was teaching me right now in the middle of all this, he's, I'm having a huge lesson. Wait, wait a minute, I'm disgraced in the eyes of the world and I'm still walking around in red clothes and I'm still saying, yeah. So what is, do, do I want to, maybe if I just took my red clothes off, I could, uh, you know, and, but I never considered it. It was like, this is, this is it. Because it was so fucking good. That was the thing. It was every breath, everything was good. All the pain, all the exploration, all the everything that that you go through with a master because you can't approach a master on your own terms it's just not the way you do it you can't make a deal with the guru you know you either or not and if you if you're a bit like this then you know you better not because uh, you can you can misunderstand what you're in and you can get hurt and some people did you know, it's not play. It's not a playful thing. It's really intense. But when you're in it, it's intensely alive and intensely amusing and amazing. And uh, you know, and be, and in that place is where cu uh, creativity bubbles. You know, you know, you don't have to suffer to be creative. The only reason to suffer, and people in the real world, they suffer for creativity. And the reason that is, I think, is because that's when they get down to a point where they know who I am. They really, and that's where the, create, the, the creativity comes out. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're in the dark space and you know, you feel that, and that's where you, that's why there's so much dark, you know, art and everything and, and music and Happiness people, that's where they they suffer and they share that, you know, and mo because mostly that's the way. Uh, it, it, happy music is uh, not easy to make. It's not easy to make happy music. It's usually sort of exciting music that makes you want to dance and laugh and everything, but it's not necessarily. 
um, it's not born out of a deep sense of gratitude. It's uh, it's just uh, born more out of how do we make some money with this, you know, and that's what money is and music is. It's a uh, you have a relationship with it, which is something never happened with me and David because it was always in the meditation room. People paid their twenty bucks or something, and uh, you know the center took that and they gave us a bit, and then we wow well, we got some money for for playing, you know, and that's just the way it, it it's always been. We've never we've never it's never been a career move you know that's not what this is either you know this is like if it was a career move i'd probably have uh, managers and uh, accountants saying this is totally unreal what you're doing you you know on a financial level on a business level all that stuff but that's not what this is this is not that this is our community and uh, the the community pays for this to happen we all we all pay for it to happen <laughs>